Hi, I'm artist Lillian Gray, and today I'm going to share with you the life and art of the famous artist Frida Kahlo. Many of you have seen the image of the beautiful Frida Kahlo printed on pillows, shoes, earrings, cell phone covers, and even mugs. But do you know the story behind this remarkable woman? Who is the woman rocking the unibrow and flower crown? She is an incredible artist that showed us her inner world with her super personal paintings. Frida made between 150 and 200 paintings in her life out of which 55 are self-portraits. She is known as the master of self-portraits. If you think about it, she is the original queen of selfies, making a statement with her intense stare and a beautiful Mexican style. There's something refreshing and liberating in coming to know a woman who flaunts the defects most women try to cover up. But below the surface of a take-me-as-I-am attitude lurked larger issues. Frida had a life filled with emotional and physical pain, but yet she became an influential artist. She has overcome her challenges and suffering, using her art as healing. Documenting her struggles in her paintings left us an autobiography in paint. She used her suffering to create astonishing original art, and she has become a symbol of dignity out of adversity. Here is the story of the amazing artist Frida Kahlo. Little Frida was born in Mexico to a German father and a Mexican mother. Her father was a photographer and as a little girl she would often help her dad in the darkroom developing photographs. Back then photographs were mainly black and white and people had to add colour by meticulously painting it in. Later, Frida would assist in helping her father retouching and colouring these photos. At the age of six, Frida contracted polio. Polio is a horrible disease that really affects your legs. We don't really have it anymore because of vaccines, but back then kids that got polio had to strap their legs in these terrible metal braces and had to walk with crutches. Frida's polio was so bad that it left one of her legs shorter and much thinner than the other. Because of this, Frida walked with a limp. And at school, she was mocked and teased and called, Piggy-legged Frida! Piggy-legged Frida! The mockery motivated Frida to become a child doctor. She wanted to specialize in helping other sick children overcome their diseases. From a young age, Frida decided who she wanted to be and redesigned herself. Frida was not fearful of going against the grain. In fact, she seemed to have cherished it. She adored reading and had a love for science. Back then, girls wanting to become a doctor was unheard of. Frida was one of 35 girls in preparatory school with almost 2,000 boys. But she was determined to stand out and assert her own individuality. For one family photo, Frida showed up wearing a man's three-piece suit, establishing her independence as a woman. Now, for a girl to be wearing men's clothing back then was very odd. She wanted to prove that girls could become anything they set their minds to. When Frida was attending medical school, she suffered a near-fatal accident. She was on her way back from class, laughing with her friends, and they were driving on a streetcar trolley, when a bus collided into them, Frida's body was badly injured. She broke her collarbone, her ribs, her leg at several places, her one foot was crushed, her shoulder dislocated, her pelvis broken, and the most painful of all, her spine was broken at three places. On top of all that, a handrail from the streetcar tram impaled her abdomen, sticking out of her on the one side. In the streetcar trolley, an artist was traveling with Frida and her friends. He was on his way to restore a piece of Catholic art and was carrying 14 karat gold leaf with him to touch up the painting. At the moment of the crash, the artist and the gold collided with Frida and Frida's entire body 
was showered in gold dust. Now, some people say that this car crash really ruined Frida's life. Others say it was a blessing because she never would have become a world-famous artist if it wasn't for this crash. But this gold dust on Frida seems like some kind of sign of things to come. Frida had months and months of being bedbound in hospital and at home to recover. She had to wear casts and straps to support her back and help heal her bones. Her body had to be stretched with painful contraptions to help her spine heal. And she was told she will never walk again. Her father brought her art supplies and encouraged her to keep herself busy with art. He built her an easel for the bed so she could paint while she was lying down. Frida had a full post bed, so her parents also installed a mirror at the top of the bed so she could be her own model. Frida's paintings are mostly small paintings so she could paint them in bed while lying down. Because she was confined to bed and couldn't go outside, everything she painted was from her memory. Frida's dream to become a doctor was now shattered. Her family had to mortgage their house to pay for all of Frida's operations and they had lots and lots of medical expenses. Eventually, Frida was in a wheelchair, but she was determined to walk again. She wanted to surprise her father and show him that she was going to be all right. One day, when her father came home and wanted to rush in to hug his daughter, Frida stopped him. She said, wait, daddy. And slowly, Frida got up from her wheelchair and she walked to him. Frida wanted no pity from people. She wanted to be her own person, filled with life and passion, and not let the accident drag her down. She decided to cover up her defected legs by wearing long traditional Mexican skirts. Her body cast, she hid neatly behind her Mexican square shirts. With her elaborate plaits and flower crowns, she deliberately drew people's attention away from her body up to her face. She also had special shoes made for her to hide her shorter leg and limp. And when people would meet Frida, they would always look up straight into her eyes and not notice her broken body. Frida loved dressing up and wearing traditional Mexican clothes to show off her national pride. At the time, nobody dressed like this. The fashion was more French and American Hollywood. But Frida wanted Mexicans to be proud of their heritage and stop copying foreign fashion and trends. The time that Frida became a woman, it was the communist revolution in Mexico. The common people wanted to be freed from the wealthy landowners. They wanted a fair, balanced society. Now, communism is an ideal that people could share in the wealth of the country by forbidding people from owning anything, having the state own everything, and then having the state allocate and share that with everyone. Capitalism is when everybody gets to own and build their own wealth with little influence from the state. Frida became a member of the Communist Party. She even changed her birth date from 1907 to 1910. Not because she wanted to be younger, but because she wanted to be a part of the Mexican Revolution. You see, the revolution started in 1910. Throughout Frida's life, she always knew about the famous communist mural painter Diego Rivera. She always respected his art. Frida sought him out for art advice. She wanted to know if she was any good. She wanted to start selling her paintings to help support her family and cover some of the medical bills. Diego was really impressed by Frida's skills and he encouraged her to never stop painting. However, Diego and Frida fell in love and within a year, Diego and Frida were married. Frida's parents didn't approve of Diego at all. They even had a name for the couple, calling them the elephant and the dove. You see, Diego was large and fat, and Frida was beautiful and dainty. She was 22, 
and he was 42. Diego had also been married before, twice. Both of the marriages ended in divorce because Diego was unfaithful. However, the beauty needed the beast. And Diego was already a very successful artist and offered to buy Frida's parents' house and pay off all her medical expenses. Their marriage would be one of the most passionate yet tumultuous and probably one of the most famous marriages in the art world. Two great Mexican artists married each other that day. But Frida wrote, There were two major accidents in my life. One was when a tram hit a bus and the other was meeting Diego. Diego was by far the worst. Their passion and devotion for each other was matched with jealousy and anger anger. Diego promised to be loyal to Frida and he would change his way, but he could never keep his promise. And this broke Frida's heart and eventually drove her to have her own affairs. At the beginning of the marriage, Frida was happy to just be Diego's wife and support his art career. She traveled with him around America, supporting Diego while he was painting his large murals. Frida didn't like America. She was opposed to capitalism. And in the painting, self-portrait along the borderline between Mexico and the United States, we see the stark contrast between Frida's homeland and the United States. On the right-hand side, we see the industrious America with capitalism in full swing. Note the tiny letters spelling Ford on the factory. On the left, we see the Aztec ruins of Mexico, statues and indigenous plants. Where America has machines. Mexico has life. Frida is wearing an uncharacteristic pink frock with lace gloves. She stands frozen like a statue on a stone marked Carmen Riviera, her Christian name and her married surname. She is pretending to be submissive and proper, but she holds a small Mexican flag to show us where her loyalties lie. A great sadness within their marriage was Frida not being able to have a child. The accident damaged her body so much and she was told she will never be able to have a baby. However, Frida felt pregnant and she was overjoyed. But then, but then she lost the baby. She became pregnant again and again and again, but she kept on losing the babies. Her body was too broken to carry a baby to full term. And Frida sank into a deep depression. She struggled to deal with the loss. She felt her body was dysfunctional since she cannot give life. In the painting called Henry Ford Hospital, we see Frida's twisted body with red ribbons bound to her hospital bed. One is tied to the baby she lost, the other to the snail to show how slow the entire procedure felt. In the bottom right-hand corner is her broken pelvis, the cause of the miscarriage. And then there's also an orchid Diego gave her as a gift in the hospital. But then he left her to go back to work. And Frida felt abandoned. Painting completed my life. I lost children and a series of other things that would have fulfilled my horrible life. My painting took the place of all of this. When Frida's father died, Diego and Frida moved into her parents' house, the beautiful home that Frida grew up in. They decided to change the house completely. Frida loved children and she wanted them to feel welcome in their home. They painted their house a strong cobalt blue with red accents to attract all the kids in the neighborhood and they called it Casa Azul, the blue house. She left the courtyard door open and kids were always welcome to run in and visit her. They were even welcome to pop into her bedroom and watch her paint. They also filled the gardens with animals such as parrots, monkeys and dogs. Frida's house and immediate environment was really important to her because her movement was so restricted. Frida had various operations to try and improve her health. She often had to wear back braces to try and keep her spine straight. She would decorate her plaster Paris sometimes with flowers. In this brace, you can see the communist star and sickle on her heart and the baby she lost painted on her womb. 
Frida knew Diego was unfaithful, but she chose to turn a blind eye. However, when Diego cheated on her with her own younger sister, Christina, Frida could not forgive him. She was outraged and decided to get revenge on Diego for all his unfaithfulness. In 1937, Mexico offered asylum to Leon Trotsky, the Russian revolutionist. He was a famous communist hero, and Diego and Frida offered that Trotsky and his wife could stay in their house, Casa Azul. To get back at Diego for her sister, Frida started an affair with Leon Trotsky. And eventually, Trotsky's wife confronted him, and they moved out. In 1938, Frida and Diego divorced. Another reason for their divorce was Frida's success. It is rumored Diego was jealous of his wife's art getting all the attention. At this time, Frida was starting to make a name for herself as an artist in America. In 1938, she had her first exhibition in New York, and she wrote in a letter, This way, I will be free. I can do what I want without asking Diego for money. I will never accept money from any man again until the day I die. When Frida divorced Diego, she painted the iconic painting known as the Two Fridas. She was completely heartbroken. This is one of the largest paintings Frida ever painted. It's almost life-size. On the left, we see Frida in a Victorian stiff lace shirt. On the right, Frida is wearing her traditional Mexican clothes, holding a small portrait of Diego. The painting visualizes Frida's broken heart, stating that Diego literally ripped her heart out and she is in danger of bleeding to death. The stormy sky, filled with agitated clouds, may also reflect Frida's inner turmoil. She also painted Frida with cropped hair, where she cuts her hair off wearing Diego's suit. Diego loved Frida's hair, her flowers, her colorful, bright Mexican dresses. And in this painting, Frida is destroying the Frida Diego loved. Frida was now free from Diego and could focus on her own personal art career. She organized an exhibition in Paris. And even though the Paris exhibition wasn't as successful as the New York exhibition, Frida achieved something far greater. The Louvre Art Museum the biggest, most prestigious art museum in the world, bought a painting from Frida. Back in Mexico in 1940, Frida had serious health problems. And when she was in hospital, Diego rushed to her and he proposed to her again. And Frida accepted. You see, together Diego and Frida shared the same passions. They were fellow artists and fellow revolutionaries. Diego also really wanted to care for Frida with her frail health. Frida had several surgeries again, but her condition did not improve. In 1953, her leg had to be amputated because of gangrene. Frida even decorated her prosthetic leg so no one would notice. Frida's mother was a strong Catholic, and even though Frida rejected the faith, we do see a lot of Catholic influences and symbols in her art, one of these being the thorny crown Jesus wore at the crucifixion. In self-portrait with thorn necklace and hummingbird, the monkey on the left was a gift from Diego, and here we see the monkey tying a necklace of thorns around her neck that causes Frida to bleed. The hummingbird is a symbol of freedom and hope, but here it is dead, hanging lifeless, around Frida's throat. There are some positive symbols in the painting, including the butterflies in her hair, symbolizing the metamorphosis into a new life. Usually hummingbirds symbolizes good luck in Mexican culture, but this is contrasted with a big black cat symbolizing bad luck. It is suggested that in this painting, Frida shows us the burden and suffering she must bear. Her physical pain, from the massive accident and her emotional pain from Diego. Frida's art is also influenced by little paintings on tin called exvotos. Exvotos were paintings by amateur artists as little gratitude prayers, thanking the saints for answering their prayers, returning a lost pet or helping them survive an operation. 
The tiny paintings usually lack depth and are narrative in their nature. They usually have a little story or inscription at the bottom of what happened. Frida had a collection of over 200 ex votos in her house, and we can clearly see that her style draws from these. Roots also play an important role in Frida's art. This is her dream to give birth as a childless woman. The vine that grows from her abdomen ends in blood instead of life. It depicts her frustration and loss with not being able to be a mother. Even though Frida was now enjoying international recognition as an artist, see earlier she was featured in Vogue magazine in 1939. But she wasn't really taken with it. She wanted her own country to celebrate her. She didn't see the reason for being internationally celebrated if her own people didn't appreciate and celebrate her art. She really wanted her own solo exhibition in Mexico. In 1953, when her first solo exhibition was finally organized, her doctor informed her that she couldn't go. She was too sick and too frail and she had to stay in her bed. He said to her, Promise me, Frida, you will not leave this bed. And Frida had to promise. Diego was asked to do the opening speech for the exhibition and Frida had to stay at home. But Frida, being an organizer, and not one to take life lying down, made other plans. Frida called all the kids in her neighborhood that so often visited her home. They were now grown men, and she organized that they carry her bed and take it to the exhibition. Frida arrived at her own exhibition in her bed. And when the doctor, who was also attending the opening, looked at her in shock, she simply said, Well, doctor... I didn't leave my bed. Frida's health kept on declining. She was in lots of pain and taking lots of painkillers. Where her brush strokes were always very precise and delicate, they became cruder and almost careless. Frida could also feel death was near. Here we see death just on the other side of her bed. While Frida is sound asleep, the skeleton is wide awake and watching. It also has dynamite strapped to it, and it can go off at any time. In Mexican culture, death is something beautiful, so it seems like the bed is slowly floating off into the sky. Frida's final diary entry was, I hope the exit is joyful, and I hope to never return. In 1954, Frida died of pneumonia. Her body was simply too broken to endure any more suffering. Throughout her life, Frida has had more than 30 operations. In the painting Broken Column, we see Frida's spine replaced by a broken pillar and her body being strapped to it. Frida often painted her bodily suffering because usually after an operation, she was bedbound and had nothing to pass the time but her art. Here we see Frida as a deer trapped in a forest with multiple arrows shot into her body like the Christian martyr, St. Sebastian. Here's a quote from the Frida movie that I believe really captured the essence of Frida's art. Her work is acid, yet tender, as hard as steel, but as fine as a butterfly's wing, lovable as a smile, and cruel as the bitterness of life. It is agonized poetry on a canvas. An American artist described Frida's art as a ribbon around a bomb. Generally, Frida Kahlo is seen as a surrealist artist. Surrealists typically paint dreams and fantasies in a realistic style. However, Frida painted her own reality, her own suffering and pain, her own inner experiences. Therefore, some argue she is a symbolist artist, seeking to represent absolute truth symbolically through metaphorical images. She often used symbols of ancient Mexican mythology in her art, as well as Catholic symbols. Whatever you classify Frida as, her art was truly original, and nothing like the world has ever seen before. In 1955, the house where Frida lived was turned into a museum, and today it seems like the world has Frida mania. So why do we remember Frida today? What makes her so important? 
she has cemented herself in history as a true Mexican icon, making her country proud of their heritage. She also symbolized female power and independence, breaking away from gender norms at the time. Her story is a story of beauty from ashes. Worldwide, she is a symbol of hope, of power, of empowerment for a variety of people who are undergoing adverse conditions. Frida used art as therapy. She found a way to paint pain. And even though she only made between 150 and 200 paintings, she kept a visual diary with vivid drawings. Frida is the poster child for misery and resilience. Most of her paintings are small in size, and yet they portray monumental scenes of death, pain, and suffering. Since these themes are universal, Frida has become an artist to whom we can all relate. Despite all of Frida's adversity, she chose to embrace and celebrate life. She had a voice. She mattered. She created a voice for herself in a time when people like her did not have a voice. Her life is a testimony that we are capable of success despite the hand we are dealt. So next time you feel sad, grab a pencil and a sketchbook, and it will help you not only to voice the pain, but to deal with it. And that's the powerful story of Frida Kahlo. I'm artist Lillian Gray, and I simply love teaching art history. Stay tuned, please like, subscribe, ring the bell. And on our website, you can buy various worksheets and activities to learn even more about Frida. So double click now and shop online. Our worksheets cover various age groups and we've got excellent exam preparation questions for the seniors. The link is in the description below.